I've sort of been writing it in my head for about 10 years. Um, when I left university, my first job was in a rape crisis centre. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, saw the reality of sexual violence day to day. Um, and then went into journalism and I've, and I've written about a lot of these topics for a long time and I, I've, I've done a lot of campaigning work and so on. So I've sort of been in this, been in this space in various ways for a, lot of, for a long time and have come to some slightly unconventional views, <laughs> I suppose, you know. Uh, and just let's dig into some of those then. I mean, talking about the sexual revolution not necessarily being a good thing for women. Yeah. I mean, just compare the before and after, if you were, and why you think it's worse. So I think that the, the, the big thing, the big historical event is the pill, right, where suddenly you, it becomes possible for women to, to control their own reproductive lives, which is obviously a good thing in all sorts of ways. And I, I really don't want to suggest that we should go back to before. I don't think we could go back, you know. But severing reproduction from sex is historically completely unprecedented. You know, it's a huge thing. And I don't think that we've really come to terms with the social consequences of that. Although people were using contraception before the pill um, for, for centuries in different forms. I mean, humans have often tried, perhaps unsuccessfully, to work out ways to avoid ha having babies but still having sex. It's the unsuccessful thing there, isn't it? Mm. That, yes, there have always been attempts at, at, well, still at contraception. Still <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, that's, so that is actually a good yeah. point in that what, you know, the pill... The pill was just about effective enough to completely upend social norms around sex. But it's actually not quite as effective as people often think. Like, typical use for the oral pill is about 91%, which means that of 100 women taking it per year, nine will expect to get pregnant, which is actually a lot. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's effective, but not completely. Mm. So actually, like one of the perverse consequences, for instance, of the pill, which no-one could have expected in the 1960s, is that you've had skyrocketing rates of single motherhood despite the fact that women now have control over their reproduction. So what do you apportion that to or attribute that to? It's, I think it's because all the social norms that existed previously disappeared almost overnight. I mean, by the end of the 1970s, the shotgun marriage is over, right? It no longer really has, has any purpose anymore in a social sense. But you always have... You have really quite a lot of women getting pregnant without meaning to, and you always have women who don't want to have a termination for whatever reason, and so you end up with uh, lots of out-of-wedlock births and actually a lot of men who don't think that they have a duty to to, to stay with the mothers of their children anymore mm. what's what's wrong with being a single mum or being a single dad i mean i i really don't want to be sound like i'm being critical of single parents who offer they are you know the most valiant people right working so hard but it is just inherently incredibly hard because you have to do it all yourself you have to be mum and dad you have to earn the money and you have to do all the care of the children, all the socialising of the children, all the disciplining of the children, it's just incredibly difficult. And we know that there are lots of adverse outcomes for children of single parents. Girls are more likely to get pregnant when they're teenagers, boys are more likely to go to prison. Both sexes are more likely to have mental health problems longer term. So, you know, we're, we're talking about some massive social effects here, yeah. which I don't think that we've really... Yeah, yeah. But, those, but, that, but also, equally, those, those single parents, they go on to, to form relationships with other people and then you have blended families and they can very successfully co-parent that child, those children. You know, it, 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 you know, society finds a way. It does, but there are some pretty grim statistics about rates of child abuse by step-parents. You know, not one to, uh, there are the most wonderful step-parents out there... But in terms of the risk, it's about a hundredfold increase of child abuse when, you, when you've got a step parent at home. So, you know. Where are those figures from? Th this comes from decades of, st of, of studies, particularly by evolutionary biologists, because they're interested in the like, connection between genetic relationships between parents and children and how that affects families. So we've touched on the pill. We've touched on on um, how you know single mothers are, are on the increase, even though people are able to control their. Uh, contraception. Mm. But what about alcohol and the changing attitudes to alcohol? And you write in your book about how you think women should only get drunk with other women. Yeah, no, this has been a, very, this has been a controversial one in the reviews. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the thing is that um, we know that alcohol decreases awareness, decreases inhibitions, you know, and just looking at the data on, on, on sexual assault, alcohol is so often a factor. And my my honest advice for any um, female friends, daughters, you know, would be that it is not, it, it's not a great idea to get drunk around men that but you don't know. But do you know. think that maybe you are beginning to see men as sort of dangerous individuals, perhaps sort of, you know, 
I mean, an unknown minority are. This is the sad truth. So I, I, I really do think not all men is true. You know, the vast majority of men are safe, So then the safe, vast majority person, of women people. are safe to have a few drinks with the vast majority of men. I mean, we can't go, not go on the road because we're at an increased risk of, of having an accident, losing our life in the car. I mean, it's just you've got to accept that there are certain activities that carry greater risk and, and you can't just assume that you're going to be raped if you drink with a group of male friends. So I, you know, I'm not saying that women have to wear burkas and stay in their houses all day by any means. It's obviously not how I live either. But I mean, you mentioned driving and all sorts of precautions that we take in relation to driving and no one would consider that to be victim blaming. We just consider it to be sensible, wearing a seatbelt, not speeding, these kinds of things. I mean, I think... I think risk management is just what everyone does every day. And it's actually what we suggest to other people. I mean, you know, I, 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 I realise that it's often considered um, politically difficult to say some of these things out loud. Yeah. But we say, some... it, we say it to each other all the time. Do you, you get know? some backlash to some of these views? And yeah. Tell me about that. I mean, how is that to, to handle? Well, I, was, I knew that I would get it from writing this book. You know, I knew I'd be called Mary Whitehouse. I, knew I that, wondered you know, if you get that analogy. Oh, yes, constantly. Do you see yourself as a bit no. of a young Mary Whitehouse? No, not at all. Do you think there's all. a place for a Mary Whitehouse in today's society? I think that there are some things that she's been proven right on and other things that she's been proven wrong on, of course. I mean, I just felt as though some of these things needed to be said and to be put in one volume as well, you know, and the response has been amazing. I mean, positive and negative, but the response has Certainly been huge. Got a response. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the GB News YouTube channel. You can watch us live 24 hours a day, catch up on your favourite shows and join in the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and you'll never miss any of our exclusive content.